Hello, the name of this talk is how to record executable notes with EV and how to play them back. And I'm Edward Ox, this person here, the author of EV, and this is Selena Ox, my main contributor at the moment. Uh, let me start by explaining the prehistory of EV. EV appeared by accident. Uh, I was fascinated by programming, and from what I knew, Unix seemed to be the right thing. And in 1995, I bought a computer that could run GNU Linux and a Linux CD. I was studying mathematics at the university, not computer science. Uh, and I was able to, to learn at the university a tiny bit of Unix and Lisp. Uh, but my social skills were very bad. I couldn't socialize properly with the people there who really knew uh, Unix. And they kept saying to me that everybody uses VI, but my memory was very bad, as bad as my social skills. And I typed slowly and with lots of mistakes. So at one point I decided to give up learning VI and I tried the Max and I find it I found it mind-blowing. I was taking notes about everything that I was learning, and my no my notes started to have lots of Elise Piper links like this. Uh, when we execute this, it opens a certain directory with lots of interesting files in it. And we, when we execute this, it opens a specific file in that directory. At first, so I was using hundreds of hyperlinks like this to, to take notes of everything that I found interesting. It was easy to follow these expressions as hyperlinks. Uh, in the beginning, I, I used the standard function find file. And then I created a variant of it called FindFlying that accepted extra arguments. In the beginning, it only supported the line number like this that would open this file and go to the line 423. And then I made it accept also strings to search for. So this variant here would open this file and search for the first occurrence of this string here. And I also invented shorter hyperlinks like this three here, in which I do not need to, to specify the directory like this, because this directory is somehow embedded in this code here, E. So E means the directory with the Lisp files in MX. And I also wrote a very primitive way to send the, the current region to shell. When I typed metax ev, which means a max executed verbosely, uh, this command wrote the region into a te certain temporary file, and if I went to a shell and I typed ee, it would run the commands in this temporary file and it, it would execute them. These are some technical details that I do not want to discuss now. And in a few months using that, I had created several other kinds of Elise Piper links, uh, all of them also supporting these extra arguments. Uh, that indicated usually strings to search for, but sometimes also sometimes I could could use that to point to a certain uh, line number. I called these ex extra arguments post spec lists, and here are some examples. These hyperlinks here uh, would open the month page of GNU Walk and go to they go to s specific sections in it, and these hyperlinks open the info manual of make and go to certain nodes in this manual and in some cases it also looks for for these strings in these nodes and these hyper hyperlinks here they run certain commands in the shell and then display its output and uh, the Elise hyperlinks that, that I was using could be always be put in comments in scripting languages. They were well, they were always the sex at the end of the line. So uh, let me show an example here. This thing here is a small TCL script. This line is a comment, and this S expression here is treated by TCL as a comment. But in MX we can put the cursor here, say. And then we type Ctrl E to go to the end of the line, and then Ctrl X, Ctrl E to execute this. And we, if we execute this, we visit the file that is mentioned in the line below. I was doing that so much, uh, going to the end of the line, and then executing the expression before a point, that I defined a key that would do that. 
So I defined that meta E would work like Ctrl E to, do, to go to the end of the line and then Ctrl X, Ctrl E. And my name for, his, for it was Eval Sex Peol. End of line here. Uh, so Ctrl X, Ctrl E, that's a standard key sequence, means Eval less sex. And I named uh, meta E Eval Sex Peol. And at the time, all the languages and interpreters that I was using uh, supported uh, at least hyperlinks and comments like this. And I also created variants of MetaXEV that could send the region to other interpreters. And in a few years using that, I had several megabytes of nodes and, and scripts. Uh, I not only had scripts with the least hyperlinks and comments, but also I had tons of executable nodes I called them scripts that were totally freeform. Some parts of them were blocks of release hyperlinks. Some other parts were, were blocks of code to be sent to shells and to other interpreters. And some other parts were, were just comments in English and po or Portuguese or whatever. And in 1995, I started to have dial-up internet at home. And in 1999, I created a homepage and I uploaded all the scripts to notes to it to my homepage because it was good karma and it was a person to become a per it was a way to become a person who deserves hints and help instead of just being the idiot that I was considered in my university because I couldn't learn VI. And at that point I was absolutely sure that everybody was using MX like that, that, that MX was made to be used with uh, MX has uh, with Elise Piper links. And at one point, I sent an email to one of the MX mailing lists. And in the email, I used some of the, the things that I used at home, some Elise Piper links and some other tricks. And I explained how, how to use everything there. And I apologized for the ugly names. I said, I don't know what are the standard functions that do that. So I wrote my own ones and I apologized for choosing bad names for them. And Richard Stallman himself answered, and his answer was sort of, this looks interesting, as, and as far as I know, no one else is using MX like this. Someone should clean up the code and document it so that we can include it in MX. Can you do that? And well, this was amazing. It was unbelievable. I was a no one in the university. I was just an idiot. And suddenly God spoke to me and gave me a mission. So I started to, to work to make EV into an, into an official package. I submitted some code and Stallman uh, answered very briefly. He had some objections that I did, they didn't understand very well. They didn't make much sense to me. And in the year 2000, I discovered that he was going to give a talk in a city close to where I live. I live in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And he was going to give a talk in Campinas that is just 500 kilometers away from, from Rio de Janeiro. I went there, I attended the talk, and I chatted with Stallman after the talk. I mentioned things about AV, and he re remembered the discussion and the code, and he said that users should not be forced to see this. And then I was incredibly offended. That was totally absurd. And... Stalman was so scared, so startled by my reaction that he walked away. And the thing is that for me, the ability to write one-liners in, in MX Lisp was the thing that completely dissolved the barrier between users and programmers. It was a kind of a philosopher's stone that could, could turn users into programmers almost magically. It was a catalyst and it was the distilled, distilled essence of free software. So it was... Uh, Absurd to say this, it was sick to say that users should not be forced into cities. Okay, so let me fast forward many years. In the year 2000, I had users should not be forced to cities, and also MetaX EV, that was one of my ways of uh, saving ex executable nodes. Uh, it was difficult to set up because users that wanted to use it had to change their RC files a bit. So very few, few people were trying EV and installing it and using it. So let me fast forward many years to 2019. 
uh, Metax EV is obsolete now. I use something called A-Beach instead. Uh, the setup is now totally trivial. EV comes with lots of sandbox tutorials with names like Find Something Intro. And I've been using EV to teach MX and free software principles to people who don't know anything about programming or Unix. They're, they're just kind of fascinated by the idea of programming, but they know very little. And now people can learn EV by memorizing just three keys, or just two, because this third one is secondary. Meta E is for execute, and Meta J is for jump. Meta K uh, runs a kind of kill this buffer, and sometimes can be used to go back from a hyperlink. And in April 10, 2019, EV finally became an ELPA package. It finally became official in some way. And this new EV has lots of tutorials with names like this, find something intro. And when you install it with the beginner setup, the, and you start MX in a certain way, uh, this turns starts MX turning EEV mode on, and it opens the main tutorial. And if you type just meta J without a numeric prefix, you, you get a page whose header is this. So it opens a page with this header and some mysterious things below it. Uh, this part of the header explains how to run uh, MetaJ with some of the main numeric prefixes. And uh, so Meta5 MetaJ goes to the main tutorial, Meta2 MetaJ goes to, the, to, to a kind of a tutorial that is mainly an index of the main keys of both EV and MX. And uh, we also have these three hyperlinks here. This one, this first one goes to the to a section of the manual of the main tutorial that explains MetaJ, and this one goes to the section about the AV keys in the tutorial about keys, and this one goes to the, the first section about MX keys in this tutorial that works like an index of keys. And if people follow this and they can follow hyperlinks that go to the to the page to pages in the max manuals and they usually learn very quickly how to navigate these manuals and how to go back to the tutorials and how to switch between tutorials uh, other files the the manuals and so on okay let me show a demo now uh, i mentioned that meta meta x EV is now obsolete. It has been replaced by something that we run by, by just typing F8 that always operates on the current line and moves down. Let me show an example of executable notes and how to play them back. Uh, I'm only, I will only be able to explain how to record these executable notes in the other video, in the longer video. Anyway, uh, when I was uh, recording this video, I realized that XPDF was behaving in a very uh, in a very annoying way. It was changing the page in moments that I didn't want it to, and the problem was that uh, when my finger was at the red, at the right side of the touchpad and I moved it up or up or down, this would be interpreted as a mouse wiggle scroll. That would be interpreted as page up or page down, and I wanted to disable that. I wanted to disable the support for mouse wheel scroll in XPDF. So I took a look at the man page for XPDF here. I didn't find a simple way to change that by changing a configuration file, but I found a section that described all the default mouse bindings here. I found a line that seemed to be relevant, this one. I created uh, a hyperlink that pointed directly, directly to that line, this one, and I also found an explanation for what this function does. And the explanation says that this function either scrolls up by some pixels or it moves to the previous page, which means page up. Uh, so the quickest way to change XPDF because I was in a hurry, was by downloading and recompiling the Debian source with some changes. 
I used this hyperlink here that uses a template to generate several links and several shell comments for uh, downloading and recompiling a, a Debian source package. I copied these lines to my notes with some small changes. And this part here uses the alternative to MetaXEV. Remember that I said that my old way of sending lines to the shell was by using MetaXEV that was very clumsy. Uh, it needed several keystrokes and, then, and it was difficult to install because we would need to change an RC file. So the new alternative to it uses just F8 that behaves in one way in lines that start with the red star, like these ones, and in another way in lines that do not start with the red star. Let me change the font to a smaller one to show how it works. If I type F8 in these three lines here, this will set up a target buffer here running a shell. And if I type F8 in these lines here, this will send these commands to a shell. This command in particular, it downloads, sorry, it makes sure that I have all the Debian packages that I need to be able to compile the source for XPDF. And this command here downloads the source package for the source package for XPDF and unpacks it. It takes a few seconds here. I do not want to, to execute this thing now. This thing would recompile the source. Uh, so this hyperlink here opens this temporary directory and it turns out that the source the source package was in, in, unpacked in this subdirectory here. So this hyperlink points to that subdirectory and this S expression here defines several shorter hyperlinks with fine XPDF in their names that operate in this subdirectory here. So this hyperlink here opens that directory. Uh, this one here runs these, these shell commands in that directory to list all the files. Remember that I haven't compiled anything yet, so all these files belong to the source package. And this one is much more interesting. It runs a grep in that directory. Uh, remember that I discovered that the, the name of the mouse event that was bound to page up or to the bad page up and the bad page down was mouse press 4 and mouse press 5. So I, this grab here searches for all the occurrences of mouse press 4 in the source and it shows that there are only two occurrences, one of them in the source for the man page and the other one in the in a rendered version of that source, which is not good. Uh, let me change the bigger font again. Uh, so I decided to, to search for the function that was associated to that mouse event. This function here. And I found several occurrences of that string and it turned out that this is a relevant occurrence. So I created a direct link to that source file and I discovered that if I commented out these lines by hand and recompiled everything and installed the new Debian binary package, then I would get an XPDF that does not have the annoying behavior. But that's it.